In this video, we're going to look at a legal problem called Reconstruct Itinerary. So we're basically given a list of airline tickets where tickets are I, right? So for each ticket that we have in our tickets, it has a from where the airport departure and two is where the airport arrive. So we want to reconstruct the itinerary in order to in order in order and return it. So all of the tickets belong to a person who departure from JFK. And then the the itinerary must begin with JFK. If there are multiple valid itineraries, uh, you should return the itinerary that has the smallest lexical uh, order when read as a single string, right? So for example, the itinerary JFK to LGA has a smaller uh, le uh, lexical order than JFK to LGB, right? Because you can see that we have a smaller character, right? In this case, LGA is smaller than LGB, right? Because B is bigger than A, right? And you might assume that all tickets form at least one valid itinerary. You must use all tickets once and only once, right? So you can see that here we basically have an example of tickets, right? And this is the start location. This is the end location for this current ticket for each ticket. And you can see that if we draw that in a graph, this will look like this, right? And at the end, we basically have one path that you can go, which is this way, right? And this is basically the routes that we're going to return in a list of string, okay? And basically, you can see that uh, for each and every single um, ticket, right? So we're starting from the JFK, like we have to start from JFK. And JFK has only a path, you can see uh, MUC, right? So it first arrives to MUC, right? And then MUC, you can only go to LHR. And then from LHR, you can go to SFO. And then from SFO, you can go to um, SJU, uh, SJC, right? So you can see that this, this is just a one linear path, right? So now let's take a look at another example, right? So let's say we have something like this, right? We have a op, uh, starting from JFK, but you can see that we can go to many options. We can go to SFO first, we can go to ATL first, but the thing is that we want to find a path that has a smaller uh, lexical order, right? So you can see that one way we can do this, we can do JFK, right? ATL, JFK, SFO, uh, AT, ATL, and SFO again, right? So that's one way. And another possible way is that JFK, SFO, ATL, JFK, ATL, SFO, right? Or another path is that JFK, ATL, SFO, ATL, JFK, SFO, right? But the thing is that we want to have a path that has a smaller lexical order, right? Because you can see here, JFK is actually, right? JFK uh, is actually has a smaller lexical order, right? Less co-value or the, the string or the character's value than the SFU, uh, SFO, right? So SFO right here, right? For a second element, JFK is smaller. So, and, the JF, and this path has actually a path. So we can just return this, right? This is the valid answer and this is not, right? So how can we solve this problem? So to solve this problem, one way we can do this is we can use a backtracking DFS solution or the brute force approach. And basically uh, what we're going to do is that we're going to use a table, right? To store the connections, to build the graph, right? So you can see that we have a table. Uh, we only have three keys. And for each and every single key, we have the list of nodes, right? A list of locations that this current key, this current location is connected to. You can see that JFK is connected to ATL and JFK is con also connected to SFO. Uh, and then you can see that ATL is connected to JFK as well as we want to choose a path that has less lexical order or smaller in lexical order. So what we're going to do is that we're basically going to sort the list of connected nodes for each and every single key, right? So that you can see that A is coming before S, J is coming before S, and then A is by itself here, right? So you can see that we basically sort the list um, after we build our table, 
then what we're basically going to do is that once we build a connected graph, we're just going to do a DFS. So basically our next step is that we basically have the graph. We're just going to do a DFS and backtracking and try to build a valid path, right? So you can see here we have a graph and we have no A. No A is connected to no B. No B uh, is connected to nothing. And no C is connected to no A. You can see no A is also connected to no C, right? So what we're going to do is that we're going to have a path, an array or a, a list of um, a path that represents the, the valid path that we're going to return at the end. And you can see that we're starting from A. And we first add A onto our path because we're vis we already visited that node. And then we're just going to um, go down to no B, right? Because no B, it, uh, B has a value that's less than C, right? So we're going to go down the path B first. So we know the B is dead end. And if we add B onto our list, you can see that there's still other tickets that we haven't visited, right? There's still tickets that we haven't used up. So what we're going to do is that we're going to backtrack, right? Because this is a dead end and there's still more tickets that we have to that we haven't used up. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to A and then we're going to do a DFS down to this path. So now we have C. So now we add C onto our onto our uh, path and then we're just going to um, basically see if there's any nodes, any edges that uh, C is connected to. In this case, we have one edge that's between C and A. So we add A onto our path. And then what we're going to do is that we know that A has also an unvisited edge, right? Un unvisited uh, node. Then we're just going to visit that node. In this case, it's node, node B, right? So we're just going to add B onto our list. And then you can see that at the end, this is a dead end because in this case, there's nothing that's connected to, right? And pretty much everything that, that we have already is visited. And then the size of the result, right? The size of the list is actually equal to the number of, uh, pretty much the number of tickets, right? In this case, no A is connected to no B, no A is connected to no C, no C is connected to no A, including no A itself, right? So in this case, we have a total of four uh, in this case, four um, lo uh, locations that we're going to move to, right? In this case, no A, no B, uh, no A, no C, no A, no B, right? So basically, we're just going to uh, return the current list until we we satisfy that condition. So in the code, this is what I did. So let's say we have an example of the original example, right? So let's say we have A here, we have B, we also have C. And C is also have edge with A. So in this case, first of our first part of our code would basically try to build this table, right? So in this case, we have a table with A has in this case B and C, and then we have B it was empty list, and then we have a C with connected to A. So we have we basically have a JSON C list, right? So you can see here this is our table, and um, after that, we basically sort it based on the lexical order, right? So in this case, we can basically sort the string in ascending order. And then what we're going to do is that we're going to start with JFK. We know that we always start with JFK and there's always a JFK in our graph. So let's say A is JFK. So we're going to start with A, right? And then what we're going to do is that this is our start and the size is basically number of edges that we have, right? So what we're going to do is that we're going to keep track of the edges, right? Let's say if there is no edges, right? And then, uh, and then we basically have no um, connections for the current node and there's no edges left, then we basically know that this is our answer. So we can just return our answer, right? So let's start with an example for our DFS function or for, for our fine itinerary function, right? We start with A, let's say, right? And then there are three edges, right? So in this case, we have A, and then there are three edges, right? One, two, three, three edges in our graph, right? Basically it's the size of, you know, the, the tickets, right? So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get, first we're gonna get how many connections that we have, right? In this case, A has two connections, right? In this case, we add A onto our results. So we have our result list. Let's say A is here, we add it onto it. And then we're going to first define our base case. Our base case check to see if A, in this case, A has two elements in our in the list, and then there there is more than one uh, more than one edges. So we're going to continue. So once we get to line thirty six, right? In this case, we iterate 
B and C, right? In this case, first we go down to the B path, right? Because in this case, B come before C. So we remove B out of it, right? So we remove B out of it. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our DFS. So we're gonna pass in B, and then now we decrease the edges that we have. So now it's two, so then we start over to here, right? And then B in this case has an empty list. So in this case, if B have empty list, so we add B onto the results, right? And then in this case, B has an empty list and then edges counts in this case is what is two, right? It's not zero, so therefore we return false, right? This is not a valid path here. So because there's still edges that we haven't visit. So what we're gonna do is we backtrack and we what you can see here in our backtracking, right? In line 39, line 40, um, is that we basically add this element back, right? Onto the list, right? So we add B back onto the list. So we still have B on here, right? So we still have B at the correct position, at the same position, right? That we removed it. And then we also have to remove the last element that we inserted onto the result list, right? Because that's not a valid path there. Um, so in this case, what we're gonna do is we're going to move on to this element, in this case C, right? Because after we visit B, now we are C. And now of course, I will have to remove this, right? And then now we're going down to the, to the C path for DFS, right? So first we, we, we get our size of our C, in this case, C is connected to A, right? So it has a size of one. So once we get to here, we visit A, right? So first, what we're gonna do is, of course we have to remove this, but basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove A out of this list, right? And we're gonna do our DFS, right? So in this case, um, we're gonna pass in A, and then number of edges that we have left, right? So we we already removed this, we removed this. So in this case, the number of edges that we have left is one, so we pass down to here, right? And then in this case, A has a size of one, right? Because we already removed C before, right? So in this case, we still have B left, so it has a size of one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the top element out of it. So in this case, it's B, right? So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our DFS. So B now has a zero edges, so we're going down, right? So first we add B. So we have, so far we have A, C, A, and then we add B onto it, right? And then we're going to check the size of a let, uh, list. In this case, the size of our list is empty, right? And then the edges count is zero. So there's no more edges here. So we just return true. And of course, what we really care about is this result list right here. Basically, while we traversing, right? We basically add the correct or add the current string onto the result. If it's not right, right? If it if after we do our base case check, if it's false, right? Then we can just backtrack, remove the last element that we added onto our result list. And then what we're gonna do is we're just going to, um, you know, continue and then down the correct path, right? And at the end, we're going to return true, right? Um, and at the end, we're just gonna return the result. So this is basically how we solve the problem. And you can see the time complexity for this algorithm is big O of, for this part right here, you can see, right? It's basically uh, linear, right? Basically, we just adding each and every single elements onto the list. And then for this part right here, as you can see, it's basically just gonna be an log in, right? Because we're basically sorting um, the entire graph, right? So, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start from here and then we're basically just gonna traverse the graph, which is basically linear. So the worst case scenario, the time complexity is basically an log in, right? So there you have it and thank you for watching.